We're going to look at the PHP recursive directory iterator class and build a function we can use as a utility as we're debugging our PHP applications. The recursive directory iterator class is found in the standard PHP library. And we can see down here in this listing of the various library items, there's several iterator classes. And the particular one we're going to look at is the recursive directory iterator class. And also, we will need the recursive iterator iterator class. Here is the recursive directory iterator class. It's a interface, basically, for iterating recursively over file system directories. And here we have its constructor and various methods that we'll be using. We also will be using the recursive iterator iterator class. And over here on the right, we can click over to see all its documentation. It has a number of constants and also its constructor and its methods are listed here. So let's go take a look and see how we're going to use this. This is the testing file structure that we'll be using. And the first script we'll be working with is actually located in the subdirectory of the parent. That's this uh, script right here, test debug dir list. And what we'll be doing is listing out from here using the recursive directory iterator and listing these various file structures out. So we can see in the parent we have two files, a folder which we're looking at, another folder, and two files in the second folder sibling. In the first uh, sibling off the parent, we, of course, we have these two uh, PHP scripts, and then we have two children folders for this, and each one of those has two files in it. Here is the interface that we're going to use to demonstrate the recursive directory iterator class, and we have five tests that we're going to run against it. And the first one is just going to give us a listing of all the files in the directory that this file is located in. And we can see how that works. And then we can see, we see there are some folders within this uh, folder that these files are listed in. So we can go a little further. We can ask the recursive directory iterator to go down one folder. And now we're seeing the actual files that are in the folder below it. And we'll run the third one, which gives us the parent directory. So this is the directory above this file. And we can see some files and some folders. We're going to get the parent again, and we'll see not only the files, but we'll see the folders and the files that are in the first level. And then the last one we're going to do is just simply show all the parent all the way down through all the children. This is the file we'll put functions in for utilities and debugging. And we just have the one function, debug dir list on line 17. So let's take a look at the two arguments. The first argument is how many levels of folders we want to list out. So we got a recurse depth of zero means it's just the current folder. And the second argument is where we're going to start relative to where this file is located. Now let's look at what our function does. The first item is to create a new instance of the recursive directory iterator. And the first argument is where we want to start the iteration from. So we're including the argument to our function that indicates the starting position. And the second argument is can be a number of things. The one we picked is skip dots, which means it won't show the dot and double dot files. Let's take a look where we find this particular argument inside the PHP documentation. Here we are in the recursive directory iterator class documentation. So let's take a look at the constructor. And the constructor you can see has two parameters. The first is the path, which is a directory that's to be iterated over, and we already included that. And the second one is a series of flags that we can include. And they're stored as part of the file system iterator class as predefined constants, and we can go take a look at those. And the default one we can see was current as file information. And without going any further, that's basically going to give you information about the current file. The one we're using is skip dots, which means that we're just going to skip the dot and double dot files. The next step in our function is to get an instance of the recursive iterator iterator class. And we can see we have uh, three arguments that we're using. Let's take a look at the PHP documentation first. This is the recursive iterator iterator class. Let's take a look at the constructor. 
and the constructor has three parameters. The first one is the iterator. Of course, we're passing in the recursive directory iterator as that argument. The second one is a optional mode and it has three values. We're using self first, which lists all the leaves and the parents in the iteration with the parents coming first. And then the last one is flags and we are using that catch get child, which ignores the exceptions such as permissions denied. So there you see our three arguments being used in the function that we're writing. On line 29, we're using the set max def method that belongs to the recursive iterator iterator class, and we're passing in the argument to our function to determine the number of levels that we're going to actually iterate. Line 31, we start an array. This array will just have a listing of all the paths and we're actually starting it off with the second argument to our function. Then what we do is we have a for each loop and we go through the iterator. And as we go through the iterator on line 33, we check to see if it's a directory and we're not on the first level, in which case we append a slash at the end. And then we add that to our pass array. And then at the very end on line 36, we return that array for use in the program that needs this function. Now we can use this function in our testing script. So here's our testing script. Our testing script is just basically an HTML file where we can put some links and then also see the output. If you take a look at it just briefly, you'll see that we have some CSS on line 17 through 28. You can review those on your own. Line 32 is giving us a link back to the same file, so that way we might be able to clean up any kind of uh, arguments that are appearing on the query line of the URL. So we simply just use the super global server and the PHP self key, and then uh, that will give us the link back to the file, and then we're just displaying the file using base name and the magic constant file. And then if you look at uh, lines 34 through 39, maybe just that line 35, uh, we're going to complete this line where you see the underscores. But basically, you can see, again, we're getting a callback to this file, and then we're adding a query uh, onto the URL, which uh, uses the key debug-action, and then we'll create certain values that we can use to uh, find out what we want to actually do later on in the program. And we do that on lines 44 through 48. So in that area, we take a look at the query that's coming in. And if we don't have one, we'll just set the variable get action to none. Otherwise, we'll grab that query value for debug dash action. Then if you look at lines 52 through 68, here we take a look at that get action variable and put it into a switch block. And we have a case statement for each of the possible values that we are setting up to come in from the URL's query line. So you can see the five different possibilities there. And then each one of them, we're going to echo the results of our function out to the page. So they're all set up to go. We just need to fill them in. Just a quick mentions to lines 49 through 51, we're starting to echo out some results to our web page. And the first thing, we're just going to put the name of this file out and then the PHP version. I like to see that whenever I have a testing script so I can see whether or not I have the correct version. Sometimes in the heat of the battle, these files get moved to servers and no one double checks to see what PHP is running. And then lastly, we're just showing the get action coming in from the URL line. Let's include the file that contains our function. So we'll do that on line 10. And we'll use include once. And of course, the name of the file debug utils.ink.php. Now we can finish up the script. So we'll do the first test on line 54. We'll put in our function that we wrote with no arguments. And we'll also include that as text up on line 35 as part of the description for the link. And now we can test that. So first we'll refresh the file and we'll hit the run link. And there's the list of files that are in the same directory as this file. Now we can do the second test. So down on line 57, 
we'll uncomment that line and we'll put in our function and we're going to pass one argument to it which is the first argument the number of recurse levels and that's a one and we'll also go up to line 36 and add that as part of the link information now we can run the second test first refresh the page and we'll click on the run button for the second test and there is our listing of files we see also the two child folders and the files that are inside of those for the third test we'll list just the files and folders in the parent directory we are going to call the function on line 60 so uncomment that line so the first argument of our function will set to zero and the second argument we will refer up to the parent with the dot dot slash notation and we'll add that also up on line 37 and now we can see this test so refresh and we'll run the test and we are now looking at the parent directory and we can see that there are two parent files and then there is the folder that this file is in and then there's another folder also in the parent directory now we will complete the last two tests together so the first one we'll do on line 63 so uncomment that line and add the debug dir list function and the first argument will be one so we can go down one level under the starting directory and the starting directory again is the parent which is the dot dot slash notation and we'll also add that up on line 38 as part of our comments then down on line 66 we'll uncomment that line and what we'll do here is go from the parent directory down two levels so the debug dir list function the two for two levels down and again reference up to the parent and we'll also mark that on line 39 so we can see it in our listing now we can run both of those tests so first we'll refresh the page and we'll run the fourth test and hit run and we can see that that's giving us the files in the parent directory then both of its sibling directories the one that contains this file and also the other arbitrary testing sibling directory and then the fifth one will run and we can see that's giving us the parent directory again its sibling directories and all the files in those and also all the files of the second level sibling folders found in the testing folder when you're using the recursive directory iterator class and all the iterator classes make sure you pay attention to the change log so the php version you are using matches any of the features that you might be trying out